Welcome back you filthy exiles. So if any of you guys have been watching the stream you'll have seen that uh, I got Glacial Hammer working on the jug. Um, now a couple of things about this build and the stupidest question that always comes up first. Can it Uber? It's a melee build let's be real. Melee is not in the best space that it could be in. Um, but this is actually going to be one of a three part series with two more test builds coming and actually I've managed to get Wild Strike Zerker working as well with this sort of template um, with some other changes which I'll, uh, I'll be working on tomorrow night. Um, but basically like th this isn't going to be able to do Uber. It's melee. It just doesn't have the gap closed to be able to get to you know killing Ubers really easily. Um, that being said, like, it'll do everything else. You'll see in the B-roll, I've done Cyrus with it. I've done 83 um, Katarina. Uh, it delves. It can do delve bosses, um, as you guys would have seen on stream. Um, so, it basically does everything, less Ubers. I haven't tried it on feared. Um, probably not going to try it on feared at this stage because I'm just enjoying playing delve with it. But just a bit of a breakdown. So, the way that this, uh, this, mod, or this version of Glacial Hammer works is... Obviously, this is on the jug, so you could get a better result if you threw it on a Zerk. You'd get a lot more damage, but you're going to die a lot more. Um, now, this is an Omniscience build, Crystallized Omniscience build. For anyone who hasn't played Omniscience, and this item is worth about, you know, 10, 15 div, give or take. If we take away the Charisma roll on it, it's worth a lot less. Yeah, 10 div. Now, I guess just like prefacing the investment to get this to work is like, you know, probably give or take 60 divine, right? You don't necessarily need a progenesis, but it definitely makes the build a hell of a lot tankier. Gives you a lot more chaos resist as well. And, you know, this build also has, like, with proj up, it has almost, you know, a four, five, nearly 50% chaos res, over cap resistances for everything else. Um, it ends up throttling up to about 56, 57 idle armor, up to, I think, a cap I've got here of 77, 78,000 armor. If we just look at defensiveness on this build alone, uh, we're looking at an effective hit pool of 213,000, and we'll talk through the configurations and everything in here as well, and how we get to that number. And are there any distorters? I, I do have Berserk ticked off, which takes it up to 6.7 mil. But damage-wise, we're looking just shy of 5 mil, right? So, and that's without Frenzy Charges. If you can get Frenzy Charges, even better. It just makes it faster, with about 9.18 APS. Anyway, talking about like how the build actually works. So, okay, it's pretty tanky, which is really good. It's a jug and my channel's basically become exclusively a jug channel uh, to the point where we're having conversations about will it jug as a series and I'll provide some advice around what I want to do with that moving forward. So anyway, let's talk about how this works. So the fundamental way to get this build to work is crystallized omniscience. So this is not a league starter. That's pretty straightforward. And the way that this works is it, what Crystallize Omniscience, for anyone who hasn't played uh, an Omni build before, does is it converts all of your attributes. Uh, so you have no real like attributes, but it actually creates a new attribute, um, which, oh, what's the right? Yeah, call, called Omniscience. Sorry, damn, I'm a little slow tonight. So basically any attribute that you stack uh, dexterity, intelligence, strength creates omniscience, and then you need to meet the minimum level of omniscience required from the gear as per normal with any attribute um, to be able to use your gear. Now, the advantage of having omniscience is that it converts every 15 omniscience into 1% elemental resistance penetration. So you don't need to run cold pen, for example, on your build. And for example, I have 68% cold pin pen just on this build. So if I stack more attributes, I would do more cold penetration, which would make Glacial Hammer even stronger. Now, what also buffs up this build and makes it stronger, aside from stacking pen with omniscience, is heat shiver. So we gain 100% cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies, and we gain 1% of cold damage as extra fire damage per 1% chill effect on enemies, which... Funnily enough, gives us like a absolutely ridiculous amount of damage scaling just with this one item, uh, which is, let's be real, probably going to get nerfed next league because it's completely abused on, uh, was it um, Ice Trap and things like that as well. Now, the actual like, skill setup for Glacial Hammer itself, Glacial Hammer natively is actually quite powerful. So every third successive strike freezes enemies as though dealing 410% damage. 
Now, this works really well if you have high APS, which is what this does. And then we further synergize this with Omniscience, which gives us, you know, Cold Pen. And then we also get the added cold damage um, as extra fire damage as well from the Heat Shiver. But then we really amp this bastard up and we go, okay, Frost Breath, which is like a 20C item corrupted, which is what you can see I have here. Um, and basically what this does is attacks with this weapon deal double damage to chilled enemies. Now, we are always chilling enemies because we apply at cold damage and we actually apply cold exposure as well from our gloves. So that's a given. So we always have chilled enemies. We have about a 35% chance to completely freeze enemies, uh, which juices up damage even more. Um, so if we look at this here, I think it's like, yeah, 35, this is how well I know my tree, 35% chance to freeze enemies, which is really good in places like Delve. So if you're surrounded by huge amounts of enemies, you can freeze them and then just do absolutely chat amounts of damage. Now, what makes this even stronger is we have, right now we have Divergent Multi-Strike, but I also have um, a, a Blitz built into this build using Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame, which is this here. And this is like 14 div, 15 div all up to get Blitz up and running right now, um, which is from the Ascendancy from the Zerka. And then we get to like 50% crit, um, somewhere in the vicinity of that so 50 percent crit and like 356 percent multi which is pretty good considering so all of this stacks up to you know nearly five mil per you know success of strike now this gets even better because we use strike and we have multi strike on the gloves and i've left it intentionally as a plus one additional strike because it's a lot cheaper and i better sell that shield so the other source of strike that uh, I'm also getting here is coming from the, uh, the strike node here, attack mastery, which comes from here. So we get additional strike here. Now, also adding to the damage from Glacial Hammer was the inclusion of Tribal Fury now deals splash damage to surrounding targets. Because we do that strike to like three, right? We also do a shotgun splash effect. So the more enemies that we're hitting around us, the more damage we're overlapping onto those enemies and we're doing just absolutely disgusting amount of damage. Now, I've also got rage generation in this build and we'll talk about that soon. I simply am just running an anomalous rage support gem as opposed to stacking more crit. We get up to 70 rage because we also have this uh, berserking node in here, which gives us you know more rage. Um, and then about, you know, 60 to 70%, give or take, whatever that is. Uh, and so basically we're stacking Rage, we're stacking Blitz Charges on a Zerka, which is how we get to 9.8 attacks per second. Um, and you'd be surprised how quickly that winds up. So in particular, this build's made for Delve, but it's actually quite good for mapping as well. Now, is it immortal? It's not immortal. It's, you know, it's melee. It, it, you've got to get to the enemy to kill them. Whereas other builds are better equipped for this right now, and really this is an area where GGG needs to work on, um, it is really tanky, and it'll do the job, basically. Now, is it the best of everything? No, this isn't like, you know, you, you could dump, uh, you know, 70 Divine into a, a Poison SRS build, and, you know, you're probably going to be able to kill Ubers pretty easily with that or whatnot, but I guess the concept of this build is fun, more so than trying to farm ubers with it and you know srs unless you really scope it is not going to be as tanky for taking shit like delve down um and right now like this can go down to about 450 500 depth um more investment would make this tankier but um that's pretty comfortable right now and, and enjoyable so you know that the, there is that factor now how do i how do i get endurance charges if not if i'm not running the um the unflinching well, pretty simple. Just run Call to Arms um, and then basically run Enduring Cry, which is somewhere in this build that I can't quite remember where because I've got a lot of shit going on in this build. Uh, there we go, Enduring Cry. So we just run Enduring Cry and then we, we basically map that to the move button and then generate three Endurance Charges. Uh, so that's how we, we satiate our Endurance Charges to get a damage reduction down or damage reduction up as well. So the other side of this too, I couldn't not put it on Legacy of Fury. Um, it's just the best item. And we're already doing like uh, heat shiver damage. So cold conversion to fire damage. And then we apply scorch on top of that, which has like a little bit of an explodey effect. So not only, not only are we doing like shotgun splash damage off the glacial hammer, we're also, and then the double damage off of the chill off of that. We're also applying scorch and we're also applying, you know, a good chunk of fire damage as well. 
So overall, like damage wise, this really hits the mark. Now, are the Glacial Hammer builds on the market right now? I'll pull that up on screen and I'll show you what it currently looks like. Um, when my browser decides to work. So if we have a look and just see like, okay, what, what are other people doing with Glacial Hammer right now? And the reason why I wanted to play it. So, you know, so few people playing it. Like you could get up to 49 million DPS with this, right? But the problem with this build is tank ability. Also, you need like crazy expensive staves to get this working. Um, though, you know, actually this is pretty achievable to be honest with you. So you could go this route, but realistically, this is not going to be as tanky as what I'm peddling here in particular in Delve. It's not going to be very good. And you're running an abyss. So basically you're forced to kill the enemy before they kill you. And I... Realistically, like I respect this build, but you know, and he's done a really good job at putting it together. But the reality is, this would actually be quite painful to play, and also rational doctrine doctrines like twenty divine alone as well. So you know, the, yeah, it just because it, it's quite difficult to get it working. Now, if you were to switch this, so basically, what you can see here is it's going to be more powerful than any of these builds. Now, I don't know what this build does here. I haven't looked in depth yet. Yeah, uses Varanustra. Yes, rage stacking, again, like, tank ability-wise, probably not the greatest. Um, yeah, itemization is a little cheaper, cheaper, to be honest with you, but the damage is much lower. So I wouldn't recommend that build. Um, and the others are all Zerkers. Now, if you push this into Zerker, right, you can actually get a lot more damage. And actually, you can pretty much see, like, Zerkers are running this setup. Um, but, yeah, Zer the problem with Zerker, again... It's squishier, you know, my, the difference between playing this circuit and playing my version on the jug is going to be 3 mil. Um, it's entirely up to you. But anyway, um, so yeah, let's get into the build guide and I'll, I'll run you through the mechanics, how the tree works and how the POB works. And then we'll talk about the gearing, we'll talk about the skill gem setups, we'll talk about everything else. And hopefully if you want to play something a little different, then you can. So the other thing with this is I've got a way to convert this to a Wild Strike Zerker, which nobody's playing Wild Strike Zerker, and I can get it up to about 7 to 8 million with Wild Strike, which is pretty good with about like 11 APS. Um, and then this build will also work with Frost Blades as well as a template. You could play that on the Jug, but I would actually convert to Zerker and then basically use Unbreakable as the, um, the Forbidden Flesh, Flesh and Forbidden Flame. Anyway. Let's get into the uh, let's get into the build and I'll uh, and I'll run through everything with you guys. Okay, as per every video I put out, let's do a uh, a de bullshitify um, section of this video. So this is the configurations in path of building um, in the tree that'll be in the description below, uh, and this is level ninety five, so it's not a level one hundred tree or whatever. So as noted, this isn't going to be a league starter. You need omniscience, yeah, no brainer. This is the second or third build scenario when you got some currency. So just here, Major God, you want Lunaris, you want, uh, generally I go Graf Cool and Lunaris, and that's going to mean, have we been hit recently? Yes, and, you know, we might be hit 10 times, and if we're in Delve, we usually have like 10 enemies around. So, about 232 um, survivability, which is actually pretty damn tanky, considering, and then this can go up because we've actually got um, our Berserker as well, so this goes up to as high as 285,000, so it's quite tanky um for a melee build which is why i wanted to play it on the jug and not the zerka because the jug's just a better build for this so anyway enduring and endurance charges this is actually coming from our um our enduring cry as noted and then we stack that with call to arms and that way we can do that as we move around we generate charges with enemies in the vicinity just check and see that's only a 320 chaos sale i got plenty of chaos for right now um, uh, so Blitz charges, really simplistically, we're running Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh with Blitz. So that's where that's coming from. Uh, Life Tap, we don't really need to have that ticked on. Um, it's coming from our skills predominantly. So Life Tap is actually appended to um, our totems, I'm pretty sure. No, not totems. It's appended to the cast and damage taken because that's going to go off quite a lot. So you're just going to completely cap out your mana if you don't do that. So life taps sitting in that. I'm pretty sure there's also one set up in Assassin's Mark as well, at Mark on Hit. So this is a dumb dumb build. You just let it do its thing. It's got Mark on Hit, but we'll talk about skill setup soon. Um, so life tap is on, but it doesn't affect damage anyway. 
Onslaught. So where is Onslaught coming from? All right, we don't have it in Flask or anything like that. That's because I have a corrupted implicit on Frost Breath, and this is like 20, 25 chaos if we do a quick spell ch uh, price check. Uh, it's really cheap. Well, saying one divine, I didn't get mine for one divine. I paid like 20, 25 chaos for it, but really good item to have that role in it. Um, and we'll talk about fortify next, I guess. So the next is, are you fortified? Gives you a huge damage buff. Yes. Where does this come from? So this actually comes from the large cluster here with Overlord. So Overlord gives you melee hits with maces, scepters, and staves, fortify for six seconds. So you have uptime of fortify. You don't have to put the gem in the gem socket for it. And that way you're not wasting a node. Is this a cheap cluster? No, I think I paid like seven divine for it. Um, if we go up and have a look, what are you worth? Uh, yeah, it's like anywhere up to eight to nine divine right now. So not cheap, but it works really well for this build. And that's, you know, why I'm saying it's a second build. Um, so we go back to config, rage, even if we have 60 rage, we still have the same and rage is coming off of our rage on hit um, or rage generation jewel, which is anomalous rage. The reason why we use anomalous rage is we get a 10% increased amount of attack speed from that anomalous rage versus normal rage. So we definitely have rage. Are we leeching? Yeah, we got leech basically built all over the tree. So yes, we're leeching. Are we on consecrated ground? Yep, bottled faith. We have consecrated ground, so that's no bullshit. Uh, nearby enemies in Delve, you've usually got about 10 at least. Uh, killed recently, yeah, in Delve that's going to be happening. Hit recently, Delve that's going to be happening. You're probably going to have taken 10 hits as well um, recently too. There's nothing else that's been changed in here. Uh, is the enemy chilled? Yeah, we apply cold, so we automatically apply chill. Now, if we apply 20% chill, um, which... That's probably really realistically going to be the chill rate that we're applying. We actually go up to like 5.2 mil DPS. So we have pretty good DPS. Is the enemy frozen? Now we do double damage when the enemy is frozen. Um, or like 410% damage, whatever that is. So yes, so you got 35% chance to freeze. And we got nearly, uh, was a 9.18 APS or attacks per second. So of that, we've got like what? 35% of that, we have like three on average hits out of nine hits per second to freeze. So very likely we're going to freeze every single enemy except bosses that are unfreezable. And then you're going to chill them. And you're still going to do increased damage anyway. Now exposure to cold. Yes, that's built into our gloves. Um, so we have that built in as our implicit on the glove. gloves. Sorry, I've got to go D&D. &D. Otherwise I'm going to get spammed. Um, so that's where cold exposure is coming from. Is it huge? It do doesn't even really affect damage at all at this stage because we do omniscience, so it's not really needed. So I could roll that out and do something better with those gloves, to be honest with you, but this is just the teething period of doing any build. Is the enemy on consecrated ground? Yes, because we have a, uh, a bottled faith. They're going to be on the consecrated ground with us, and I have that flask auto trigger. Big question, guardian, guardian pinnacle damage? Yes. What's the uber damage for anyone interested? 1.5, not enough for uber but absolutely enough to do everything else in the game that you would want to do, including Maven and stuff like that. Just take a little longer. Super tanky, really good damage, at least at like a really medium level for a melee build. It does really good screen clear too on uh, taking out enemies. Uh, and we have plenty of mana leech and everything built into the build, uh, mainly because we also have fuel the fight, which gives us mana leech. Um, and that's also where we do our increased damage while leeching as well. So that's basically the breakdown mechanically. So we'll go through the gearing setup next and I'll explain all the items in the build. Okay, so itemization, first of all, heat shiver. Now you want the um, you want the enchant for hatred. This is so we can manage man um, our auras down uh, to an acceptable level. And I run like five auras here that we'll talk about when we get in the skill gem setup. So heat shiver, this gives us increased cold damage as fire damage and is really, really powerful on this build. Uh, second is a, just a really good shield that stacks at least 50, mi 50 minimum to strength and 50 minimum to intelligence. The reason why we need uh, attribute rolls on the shield, and somebody's going to hit me up and say, you haven't rolled that 40 uh, maximum health or blessed orbs, Pff, whatever, dude. Um, the reason why you need attributes on the shield is because that's how we get up to the limit that we need to re reach for omniscience. So we have enough omniscience to run all of our skill gems and gear and stuff like that. So that's why we do that. Um, I got a fractured strength shield. You don't need to do that. Uh, and I got a quite high armor shield. You don't, again, you don't need to do that. It's got enough armor as it is. 
just something as food for thought, higher armor, more survivability. Uh, obviously, crystallized omniscience, the better roll, the, a better roll, the better, basically. And this has charisma anoint, so we can run all of our auras that we need to run. Uh, Frost Breath, this is one of the key items and, you know, the implicit for chance to, uh, for onslaughts pretty much needed at this stage. Uh, higher roll, the better. Um, and this also does attacks with this we weapon, deal double damage to chilled enemies, which is where a lot of it damage is actually coming from. So this weapon is really good with skills that convert to cold. Uh, Circle of Fear, and you basically want to try and target the implicits. Like if you can get plus one to frenzy charges or plus one to endurance charges, even better. But you basically want attributes and defense where you can or anything else that buffs up damage at the end of the day. And we need specifically cold damage while affected by Herald of Ice is increased. And also Herald of Ice does increased buff effect as well. And this is going to amp up your damage. Um, we're using a Brass Dome Chest. If you can get higher than a 4% roll, even better. If you can get a Corrupted Implicit, and I couldn't find one similar to my RF build. Um, if you can get a Corrupted Implicit that does increased damage, even better. Um, and socket colors are four red, one green, one blue. So really, really, really easy to socket color this one too. So you don't have to muck around with off coloring or anything like that. These go for like two div, by the way. So depending on the role, they go to like two to four div. So they're pretty cheap right now, um, which you can farm natively out of delving for anyone who watches my delve guide. And by the way, this build is fully funded by just delving like that. It's, it was that easy. Um, now my vermilion ring, I lucked out with really good rolls on this, but, uh, I actually crafted this ring. So I've got 63, um, to strength and 56 to intelligence and then chaos res as well on top of that. And then some more mana leech. If you get anything close to this, this is what you need, where you need to go. Ideally, if you can get chaos res on the ring, um, that's best case scenario. If you can't just work towards that as you min max, but you absolutely need attributes on it. Um, my gloves. So the most important stat of the gloves is actually the strike skills target one additional nearby enemy. If you can get plus two, even better. Again, I actually crafted this item. So basically I use shuddering and um, and fundamental jewels to craft the strength and the attack speed rolls. And I lucked out with the cold damage to attacks and physical damage to attacks. But this is not the best item for this build. You can get way better items. And then I crafted increased damage while leeching because it's got the highest amount of flat damage and I'm always leeching. Um, now belt, uh, this one is, uh, I crafted this one too actually. So basically I got an implicit strength belt with uh, chaos res and then I just slapped it with fundamental fossils and, um, and metallic fossils until I got lightning resistance and, uh, and strength which capped out my lightning res and my strength. And then I also lucked out with, a, with an elemental damage to attack skills roll and like yeah, I just crafted 54 health on it really easy. And then finally, uh, Legacy of Fury. This gives a Scorch damage to enemies around us and does like a bit of a um, explodey effect. Now, I do do have the implicit for 16% increased attack and cast speed if you've killed recently, which juices the damage up. And in Delve, this is really good. Um, and that's what I recommend as best in socket boots. Like you can probably, if you're happy to get rid of Scorch, you will lose a bit of damage, but your defense will go up even higher. And that might be how you get through Chaos Res. If you do do that, then roll the implicit uh, Scorch roll or Brittle roll. Ideally Brittle. Um, and that's going to make uh, your crits do a lot more damage to enemies. So then your crit's going to go up. And, and actually, I will, I will might play with that if I do a second iteration of this build. Now, Flasking, I literally just have a Corrupted Blood Immunity Eternal Life Flask. Progenesis Flask, which is just the best flask in the game. Diamond Flask, I've got um, increased attack speed during effect and also chance to gain flask charge when I deal a critical strike, 17%. And this, I'm always critting, so it's really good. Um, I don't have the best granite flask I could put on, but gain one charge when you get hit by an enemy is ideal for this one. And then a bottled faith as well. So, and all these are set to auto trigger, except for the life flask. So that's basically the gearing setup for this. Okay, skill gem setup. So in the helm, I'm running Precision, Herald of Ice, Determination, and Hatred. Um, in my weapon, I'm running Arrogance, Enduring Cry, and Vitality. So we actually reserve life for Vitality. Um, and I've been doing this on a lot of builds because it has a very minimal impact and we juice up the effect of life regeneration. And so I idly have like 656 life regeneration per second. So it's got quite a lot of life regen um, for what it is. Uh, in my shield, I'm running Mark on Hit, Assassin's Anomalous Assassin's Mark, and Life Tap. So this just natively 
ticks over as I hit. And this is why I reserve life for vitality. So then I can support that life tap so that I'm never worrying about degening um, or anything like that. Um, and this would be in particular really important if you played this tree with a Zerker. So I would do the same setup for a Zerker, just change out the Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame in the Ascendancy. And this is going to work really well. Uh, and then in the chest, I'm running my Glacial Hammer setup. So I'm running level 21 Glacial Hammer. Um, awaken Elemental Damage uh, with Attacks. And that's obviously a, uh, a, a level 5. So this also means that Elemental Damage cannot be reflected. So you can run Reflect Maps with this build. Um, Anomalous Rage, uh, then I'm running a Divergent Multi Strike, mainly because it's one div and it's way, way cheaper than Awaken Multi Strike. If you had Awaken Multi Strike, it goes up by like another three, 300 to 400,000 DPS. Um, Awaken Cold Damage Support, it does give you plus one as cold skill gems, but it doesn't really matter um, because you, Glacial Hammer, it, it's a cold skill gem, it gets a 22, but it's not a huge damage buff on melee skills like it is with spells. Um, and then we're running increased critical strikes at level 21, 20. This one's a little expensive. So 20, a 20 and a 20% is fine. Or gem level 20 and 20% is fine. Uh, in the gloves, I'm running leap slam, cast some damage taken, molten shell and life tap. So that auto triggers. And so I can just leap slam around. Now, obviously you don't need to run attack speed with leaf slam because we got blitz and we got rage. So this gets really fast anyway. So it's just natively going to scale up. Uh, and then in my boots, I'm running Phantasmal Ancestral Protector. And the reason being is this gives you increased totem buff effect. So 20 by 20%. So that's going to buff your uh, your tooltip damage up significantly. So like just idly before even buffing, it's 138,000. It goes up like 400 to 500,000 on the tooltip, which is crazy. Uh, and then I'm running multi multiple totems, uh, Berserk and Ancestral Warchief as well. So that's going to juice up your physical damage and your attack speed which is how we get to such high levels of damage and that's included in the tree in the pib i've got berserk ticked off so if you want to see what the damage is with berserk up uh you just need to click berserk on and it actually goes up to like 7.4 mil dps so it's quite a lot it's a good amount of dps um but that's it for the skill gem setups Okay, so the most fun part of the entire build is the skill tree. How do we get this working? So this is a level 95 skill tree, and I've got this balanced pretty well to deal with attributes. So basically, we're going to come down, pick up the health nodes, down to warrior's blood, get heart of the warrior, grab born to fight, grab versatility. This is going to increase your accuracy. Come down, you want prismatic skin. We grab this socket here. So the jewel we want is going to want, you're going to want attributes to get your omniscience up and any crit multi that you can get. And this is actually really cheap with uh, melee weapon rolls because no one playing is melee. So, yeah, more power to you. Then we'll come up and get Berserking. We want the um, the attack mastery for one additional nearby enemy hit. Um, this is going to mean that you don't need to run like Ancestral Call, I think it is. Um, and you can hit more enemies, which is what you can see in the B-roll. And then Constitution to increase HP. Then we'll come down, pick up Eagle Eye, and also Precision has 100% increased mana efficiency. Up to Solar Steel, we want the Proficiency node down here, Tribal Fury, and then we also want 40% increased melee damage um, with close range attacks. So the other thing you'll notice in the tree, and I think I missed it, uh, we actually, it, it's actually much higher DPS, um, or, you know, not by a huge rung, but we do have close range, so we get like 200,000 DPS off that. Uh, which is pretty useful um and then we have call to arms we have bloodless uh life mastery 50 uh to hell hp sorry uh and then we have attribute masteries up here uh with utmost might and we also want five strength per allocated mastery passive skill that's just going to increase your omniscience as far as it can um and then we come up and get determination has 25 percent increased mana efficiency juggernaut now, the Watcher's Eye I have in this does uh, 20 life per enemy hit while affected by Vitality, and also flat cold damage while affected by Hatred. This is quite expensive. I think it was like 10 div or something like that. You don't need this in the build. Um, you could do anything else. Maybe stack something that gives you more survivability or whatnot. I'll leave it up to you. If you want to copy this, you can. That's what it's here for. But you can change this. It's just going to change your damage profile. Um, and then we have Barbarism. And we pick up the critical mastery for a 25% um, increased crit multi against unique enemies and disemboweling. Um, we'll get our large cluster last. That's the last thing that we're going to finish leveling. 
Then we come up, we grab devotion. We want to get holy dominion, divine fervor, and dis discipline and training. Um, and then we want to come up and get divine judgment. We also want the other dual socket here, which again, we're going to do the same thing. Critical uh, strike multi and attributes where we can. Ideally, all attributes, which equates to 18 attributes, not six. Um, and then we come up and get sovereignty, uh, increased 8% uh, increased damage while affected by auras or heralds. We have five of those. So, you know, five times eight. Uh, what's that? 40? Uh, there we go. I know my math. Um, and then we get uh, Purity of Flesh, uh, Galvanic Hammer, and Pain Forger. And that pretty much gets us build, our build up to 95. So beyond that, the Ascendancies we're going to go for. Um, always, I uh, generally go as you're leveling this up, Untiring for, for the Health Regeneration. Then Unbreakable, then Unstoppable, then Undeniable. Or you could get Undeniable and Unstoppable last. Um, and then obviously the Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh is going to be built into here. And we need Blitz uh, on both of these. And this is combined about 15 Div. And then the Cluster Jewel that we're using here is Fuel the Fight, Martial Prowess, and Overlord. And in particular, Overlord's really expensive. And this is what gives us our Fortify. But we also get increased attack speed and leech. And we also get increased global accuracy rating, flat attack speed, and flat damage as well from this as well. And that's basically it for the tree. It's not that complex. And realistically, any melee skill that uses strikes, you could use, I think it even this even works with Ice Crash. So you can do the same setup with Ice Crash and get good DPS out of that. Um, but it's up to you at the end of the day. This is pretty tanky, um, works really well. And I'll leave it to you guys from this point to rejig this the way that you see fit. All right, so I hope this build gives you a bit sort of more of build variety which is what my goal was now is as i said this isn't the best build out there it's it's a pretty damn good build um but it does give you the ability to play around with melee and make melee viable and i've been having a lot of fun with this build i, I find it really amusing but anyway uh don't forget to follow the twitch uh don't forget to follow the channel and, uh, and I stream most nights these days uh, at about 11 p.m. AEST until 2 a.m. So uh, you can catch me then. Um, but anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoy the build and uh, stay filthy.